Hello again YouTube, my name is Pete Davison and today we are having a look at One Way Heroics Plus, a Japanese indie roguelike that may look a little bit familiar from my previous video. As luck would have it, uh, shortly after I recorded that, uh, Western publisher Playism then went and released the Plus version that they've been teasing for quite a while. And it's quite a significant improvement over the original as well, so it merits its own exploration I think. So, let's jump right in and take a look. One of the main additions to the game is this new meta game here, the renovation of the castle that you start the game in. So as you play the game you can uh, build extensions onto this castle to add new rooms to it and you can then place residents in those rooms and those will unlock various game features. So at the moment you can see we've got a medicine dealer over there who sells things like healing files and so on. And there's also a quest NPC which is one of the uh, particularly interesting additions to the game because it means that the uh, the only quest in the game is uh, is no longer fighting the demon lord you have other things that you can do as well and that will then unlock new classes and so on as well so let's have a play with hmm, who should we try let's try the bard no the adventurer and i not completed a game with him before or her in this case. So let's take Adventurer and let's have a look at our perks. Just like the original you can pick uh, a series of perks that range from simple stat bonuses to improvements to your skills, reductions to certain amounts of damage and so on. Uh, one of the more interesting additions though is these disadvantages that you've got here that will give you a bonus to your score at the end of the game but will give you uh, a pretty significant penalty to, to something like that. So Swarm by Tough Foes is pretty self-explanatory. No Pain is probably the most unpleasant one that you can give yourself. It gives you an 80% increase to your score at the end. Um, and it means that you can't see your current life except at midnight on each in-game day. You also can't see how much damage you're taking. So that's uh, that's pretty interesting. Nearsighted means that you can't un identify certain characters, whether they're friend or foe. And careless person means that you uh, just drop items as you go. So we'll uh, we'll leave those for the minute. Let's bump up our agility level quite a bit because that's really useful for the adventurer. They're not very good at fighting. Uh, let's also take breath control to reduce energy consumption. We'll take item appraiser as well because it's really useful to be able to tell what items are. All right, start the adventure. Okay, let's jump into the public dimension. Oh, these daily campaigns are similar to the original, but this is the uh, the new addition of the weekly campaign there. So if you want to play with other people and compare your uh, performance with them, you've got a whole week to get through this one here. In fact, let's take a look at this one. Because I've already tried the daily one earlier today, so it'd be nice to have something that I'm not familiar with at all. We've got an afternoon stroll, which is the normal difficulty. The main difference between that and the easy mode that we played in the last video is that rather than the Demon Lord final boss showing up at 400 kilometers, the Demon Lord instead shows up at various points throughout uh, the adventure, as shown by the clock in the top right corner of the screen. We're not going to fight the Demon Lord, don't we? We're going to have a chat with the Force Knight here and try this new quest. So in the original game most of the character classes were unlocked either by uh, spending the hero points that you earn at the end of each game or by fulfilling specific conditions. Uh, the new classes that have been added into the plus version have their own side quests to complete. Well, I don't say side quests, they're more like main quests because they completely replace the the fight with the Demon Lord. So now we've activated that quest, you'll see the clock in the top right no longer has the sort of dragon symbol around, it's got the swords instead. That's reflecting that we're doing a different quest. Uh, and the clock now shows us when we're going to find the various temples that we need to find in order to complete this one. 
the flashing red hand that's a new addition in plus as well when that reaches the 12 o'clock position that means that we're going to find some sort of boss enemy which is not something we really want to encounter with the adventurer class because they're not particularly good at fighting that looks quite fun I will take that with me There have been some tweaks to some of these classes uh, since the original as well. The Adventurer class now gets experience for actually going into dungeons. Get out of the way. Yeah, so as an adventurer it's in your interest to actually try and seek out those dungeons and at least take a step into them even if you're not going to loot them completely if the enemies in them are too strong. But their main sort of class perk is the ability to, uh, to see when treasure chests are coming up. You'll see little markers on the head up display pointing you in the direction of them. So you know which direction you need to be heading. Okay, that's useful. And another one. Adventure is quite good at climbing mountains as well. Which is pretty useful when you need to make a quick getaway. Or get out of a situation that uh, will leave you stuck in the darkness. Which we're at slight risk of doing here, but we should be alright. There we go. Classes with movement skills are really useful because it means that you can use more of the map and you're less likely to get boxed into places. That's probably an improvement to our normal clothes, yes. So let's take that. Let's equip that. Let's get rid of those. And now we can move. Reasonable progress so far. No sign of the first temple yet. Villainous enemies are sometimes quite dangerous, but they're worth a lot of experience. You might also see that one of the perks of the adventure class is you can see, uh, oh shit, I should say, I'm playing a female character. Um, they can see how many items that someone is holding as well so you know that if it's going to be worth your while attacking something if you're after a particular thing that you know enemies drop so for example if you're low on energy and you need to know which animals are going to drop meat and that sort of thing if you're feeling unscrupulous as well you can also use that to see what NPCs are carrying as well so if you uh, feel like murdering them which uh, will get you into a lot of trouble but can also get you some nice items then uh, then you can do that Queen Frida won't be very happy with you if you do that, though. Leather vest? Yeah. You can have my knight's coat. Anything else I can sell you? Don't like carrying those around, because if you catch fire, then they often explode. Taking much less damage now, that's important for the adventurer. But we don't want to wear armor that's too heavy because that will negate the advantage we get from having that high agility at the start of the game. These bastards were up throwing stones at me as well. Get out of here, Harpy. It's 
Scorch Buds are not very useful, so it's worth just eating them straight away. as an immediate 5% boost to energy. Well, I'm not going to get in there, are they? Because there is uh, lava in front of the door. Let's heal up a bit. Stop it! Not sure I want to go toe to toe with a bear with this character. Uh, we may not have a choice. No, I'm going to run away. Ow. Yeah, it's time for the healing big guns. what I wanted to spend all those healing vials on, but, you know, experience is nice. And it's better than being dead. Can't use potions if you're dead, after all. Can't help feeling that this world isn't ideally set up for the adventurer class in that I haven't come across any dungeons at all yet. Or treasure chests, for that matter. Chainmail. Can't really afford that, unfortunately. Maybe we can. Yes. They're both the same price, so they're likely to be the same thing. Let's take this one. Sell the leather vest. That also help us with fire damage, which can be quite unpleasant, so. The bear. Yeah, no. Oh no. Time for emergency escape. Oh no. <sighs> Maybe we don't use the adventurer class. So anyway, let's try that again. This time, let's take someone who's a bit better at fighting things. Let's take the hunter. Yes. Yeah, a hunter. Is that quite fun? They start with a bow, which is pretty handy. Uh, they also have pretty high agility anyway, so if we start them off with some bonuses. In fact, if we start them at the same perks they had last time, that should be pretty good. And let's try that same campaign world. New skip button is a godsend. You don't have to click through loads of dialogue every time you start a new game. Can't actually open that. Never mind. Should have taken the lockpicking perk. Never mind. 
We'll be fine. We'll find some loot. There we are. There's a Nauta fruit and another one. That's some of the things that you would have got from that chest anyway, so... See, a hunter class has this handy ability to see enemies even when they're off screen as well. You can also see their remaining life points as well, which is really, really useful. It gives you a much better idea of uh, enemies' relative strength to you. So you can see if someone's got lots of hit points, then uh, you may want to think twice about taking them on. There's that mercenary. He can't afford to hire his services at the moment. Hunter is great as long as you can stay in range, combat range. Although there are actually no slouch in the melee department either in terms of damage and combo hits and so on. Nice thing about them is because their ab agility is so high it means that they can uh, they can hit things a lot of times. So weapons like that kunai I just picked up would be particularly good for them. So we'll take that with us for when we run out of arrows because we will run out of arrows. Hunters aren't great at climbing mountains, but that's one of the abilities that they do level up a bit as they uh, progress. I didn't mean to shoot an arrow there. I meant to eat one of these. There we go. Let's try an kunai on them. Not going to be efficient. Frantically hack my way out this person's house. Oh, safe. Right. Okay, we won't do that again. So because we don't have the lock picking skill, we can either try and bash them open, which we're not going to do particularly well at with the weapons we've got and our relatively low strength, or we can find treasure chest keys. We've got a recruitable ally there, but I don't think we have enough charisma to recruit him. Let's take a peek anyway. The ultimate mercenary panty shot. No. We can't afford your services, I'm afraid. Unfortunate adventurer. I'll leave the goat alone, otherwise we'll uh, make the jade forest angry. They're pretty tough. Decent rate. 
Place of leveling does seem to be quite a bit quicker in plus than it was in the original. Which is no bad thing. But it also means when you come across situations where you have to spend levels to do stuff, um, that they tend to cost a bit more than they did before. Oh, I'd like some new armor, but I can't really afford that. So, on our way then. To take revenge on these harpies for last time. And maybe some bears. Surrounded. Can't quite one shot them yet. If we can get in position early enough, we can kill them before they reach us, which is essentially what any range combatant needs to do. Yeah, I'm not falling for that one again. Oh, you're tough. Increase my mountain climbing skill. That's pretty useful. Ooh. Yeah, no. Let's use one of these. Maybe use one of those. And I think it's time to run away from the bear. We're evidently not bear ready. Don't throw a stone at me. Olympic through this area. One of our fruits has rotted. That means it restores less energy than it would do normally. This guy's a new addition for plus. You can spend some money and ability levels to uh, learn new skills. I think we're past on those for the moment though, because we're not that high level. So we need to concentrate on increasing our base abilities for the moment. So our first temple's coming up. So the white end on the clock reached the 12 o'clock position, so that means shortly on the map we should see a flashing blue area. This is one reason why range combat's quite effective. And it means that the enemies with auras you can kill before they get too close to you and apply their uh, their unpleasant effects.
climbing over those mountains is asking for trouble. What have we got here? Yeah, no. So those cooperative NPCs are a little bit different from the uh, the actual party members, and they they follow along behind you rather than occupying the same tile. It also means that they have some restrictions on their movement, so they can't go over mountains or rivers or that sort of thing, even if you can swim through them, whereas normal party members can. quite a few different cooperative NPCs you can take with you. There's things like a pack horse who can carry stuff for you as well. Where is this temple? Treasure chest key. That's what we need. Calling for you again, notice board. Again? Yeah, why not? Eat it. it. Looks like an elf village there. Yeah, they usually have a healer. Sometimes have some nice items, but not in this case. I'm not going to waste a treasure chest key on a wooden box because they tend not to have particularly good stuff in them. I'll save it for an extravagant chest if we come across one. I'm not going to get through that in time. of a score, what does that do? Blows opponents in front of you back four towers and does some weak damage. Now that will become useful if we get to the final boss. Which I'm not massively confident of, but we'll see. Temple just up ahead. There we are. Going to continue. 
contend with the Dark Knight now. Interested to see how the Hunter does with these. That's it, you tank it. Don't kill him, eh, because he's quite useful. Oh no. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Need to drop some stuff there. Or use it. Let's heal up a bit. Green mark on the map there, point of interest. So that'll either be some chests or a tree that's got some fruits on it. Or a dude carrying one of these. Yep, I'll take that. Chainmail, that's what we need. Oh, and that's useful as well. Yeah. And that. Right, so we need to sell some stuff. You can have my clothes for starters. I'll sell you that kunai. So I think the sharp longsword is going to be better. And that's probably all I've got to sell for the moment. We then equip that. Use this. Use that again. Still need to use one thing. Or drop something. Let's just use a herb. There we go. Right, now we're ready. Let's use our scroll of analysis as well so we know how durable our chainmail is. You're not friendly. You can take a long sword to the face. My good sir. Why aren't you taking any damage? You're taking damage, so that's better. A little bit lower on health than I'd like, but can't reach there. Another dungeon here. Can we get in? Yes, we can. Next objective coming up as well. So we need to be ready for that, because there will be some more Dark Knights there for us to fight. Oh, it's very close as well. Oh, so we really don't want to be getting into a fight with tough things. I have to use one of those keys on this. Excuse me, I to turn off the microphone to sneeze there. Hopefully you didn't hear that. Right, come on you Dark Knight bastards. 
Awakening. Yeah. You are unpleasant. You have stuff as well, but nothing I really need. So let this chappy out. Good enough to heal us. I won't bore you with the law for the moment. If you want to find out the law behind the Dark Knights, you can play the game for yourself. Leveling at a pretty good pace. Let's kill this stinky skeleton. What are our stats like? The agility's up to level 12. Strength is only 2, which is not great for melee attacking. But charisma 2, though. So if we come across any allies, we should be able to recruit them. That's a big if, of course. Yeah, fuck you, bear. What have you got to offer? Same as before. I can live without those. Flashing red bear, that doesn't look good. Let's give him a bit of a pelting from a distance. time. Oh, there's bears everywhere. Off. Yeah, suck it, bears. What is with all the bears? Uh oh. 
Oh. Fire arrows into your face at point blank. Ooh. Teleport trap. It's annoying because they usually guard treasure rooms. Still, I'll have to go without for now. Ah, oh, yes, please. Let's try and progress through this area because it seems pretty dangerous. And it's full of bears. to the snowfields and a stinky harpy. Still full of bears apparently. now where melee attacks are practical because of the combo attacks that we can do. Also doing a decent amount of damage as well. Yeah, I got 48 levels, so that could be useful. Let's increase our combo rate, which is also increased by your weapons. I'll take some armor as well. Can't afford that one. So tough clothing of the goddess plus one. Armor three, defense ten percent. Not quite as good as our chainmail, but it will serve as a backup. What's our chest there? Wind cloak. There's almost no defensive abilities here. Let's leave that where it is. A cursed wolf over there. I don't want to get too close to him. Wolf's coming for us. Smelly wolf sounds like it should be a euphemism for something. I don't entirely know what, but you know, make up your own. can be quite dangerous because they sometimes have shadows hiding in them, which are quite nasty enemies. They broke money. That's an unfortunate downside to smashing open chests and boxes and things is so you can uh, you can actually break the contents of them. I didn't realize you could actually do that to money though. Next temple's coming up. We've got a tough bear coming again. Yeah, get out of my face, bear. My 5% combo rate. Right. 
rotten meat. No, thank you. Let's eat one of these fruits as well. Before they go completely off. If only I was that disciplined in real life. There's our temple. There's our Dark Knight friend. You can be stabbed in the face. Excellent. I think we can handle this. Okay, so the next temple we find will be the final boss. He will almost certainly kill me. See what's going on where. Got a dungeon here. And a town. Probably worth paying a visit. An extravagant chest is probably worth taking a peek at as well. You can't hit me, Minotaur. Do I take on the red flashing one? That sounds like it's probably a bad idea. But, you know, this game is made for bad ideas, so... At least the other stuff's all coming out first. Yeah! This is the trouble though, you have an encounter like that and it goes really well, and you get overconfident and then you die. But that was ever the way of the roguelike, wasn't it? So. village. Thank you very much. And a merchant there. Don't need that save crystal because I'm not going to save because I'm a purist. Now. You see that our mountain climbing skill has leveled up quite a bit, so it only takes two turns to go across the square of mountains now. Whereas for the slower classes, it can take them up to ten turns, and if there's enemies nearby, that can be a very, very bad situation indeed, and they get ten free attacks on you is enough to kill some of the weaker classes. You killed an NPC, you bastard wolf. Dark Brotherhood license. Hmm. Let's take that. Take those herbs as well. Always useful. Leave the flash grenade. Reduced accuracy will be useful, but uh, we kind of need to do damage. Get it with some more arrows ahead of that final battle as well, so we can take on the boss from a distance. He hits hard, and we only have 140 hit points. No, just 
just a skill dude. We leave you where you are. Lions! You're not so tough. Uh oh. Not majorly confident. No, we're going to run away from these guys. See ya. Oh good, and the boss. This is not good timing. Massively confident here. Let's use that last awakening charge. Five levels will help very much, I'm sure. I'm a little concerned about not having awakening for the final battle there. Oh, and potentially going to die. So, um. Away. Ouch. Oh, damn it. Anyway, I think you've probably seen enough of my incompetence. So that's One Way Heroics Plus. I can very much recommend that for those who enjoyed the original. It looks very similar. There's a significant amount of additional content in there that's well worth exploring. The new quests, the new classes, the uh, castle renovation metagame. There's really a lot to this game now. So it's, uh, it's well worth taking a look at. So, it is available now from Playism's website. Just give them a quick Google and you should be able to find it. Uh, it's coming to Steam as well. The original One Way Hero X is available on Steam now, but uh, take note that this is not the same game. It's not a free upgrade. It's a completely separate game. If you buy Plus from Playism, you will get a Steam key when it releases. So, uh, if you want to play it right now, then, uh, then feel free to grab a copy. It's only $6.99, if I remember correctly, and worth every penny of that. So, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, laughing at my poor adventuring skills. And uh, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and all those things that YouTubers tell you to do at the end of videos. And I will see you again soon.